So today we're going to be working with patchwork. Um, really, in my opinion, what patchwork does is it makes making figures and multi-panel figures, especially uh, much easier and much more accessible um, than just trying to manually do it by ggplot. And so we'll kind of work through some of the examples here. Um, what's interesting is ggplot almost uses, um, like the, please excuse my dear aunt Sally from, from, you know, I guess high school, middle school era, um, to follow those rules for how your plot is going to be made. And so we'll start with the simple one here, the library ggplot2 and patchwork. Um, and your first plot is just a, a scatter of NT cars. And your second plot is a box plot of the same thing, but with gears. Now, when they do P1 plus P2 with patchwork, you get a side-by-side -side panel within, within one plot image. Um, anybody that's maybe familiar with ggplot2, can you see where patchwork is being used here um, in terms of in terms of the code, in terms of the script up here? Um, I was just gonna say it looks like it's like overriding the plus operator. Um, is that what you're asking? Yeah. So really, patchwork comes into play here, right? Um, this plus operator without patchwork. So if we minimize, get out of this. I just library ggplot2. And, uh, wait a second. and then try to make my two plots. If I try to, to add two ggplot objects together, you can't actually do that in ggplot. And so what uh, Patrick is doing here is reassigning the plus figure uh, so that you can add side by side panels. So if we library patchwork. And now we have our panels. So this is the the expression on this one is kind of intuitive, but it does get more complicated. Um, so here we could add our next two plots and we have the, the parallel pipe. So this is P1 and P2 and P3 are gonna be next to each other and plot four is gonna be underneath. And so we can see how, if we play around with this expression, we can see how almost the order of operations comes into play here. So let me add in, in our plots. If I go here and I move the parentheses to say here, it will change the order of the plot. So now, now since the parentheses, it's doing these two side by side and these two one over each other. Whereas before, it was these three side by side and plot four on bottom. And so again, it's really, um, 
like order of expression in math. Uh, one thing I was playing around with that I'm not really sure of is the difference between the plus sign and a, a pipe here. Um, if anybody else is familiar with patchwork. Oh, we've got. So this will produce the same graph as the ones with the pipe. Um, so I'm not sure of the specific uh, utility of the pipe, but it works as a plus sign. And what the division works as is a, uh, a break between the rows. So essentially this says plot four will go in row two of the plot matrix. All right. All right, let's go with assembling plots. And so, we can make our four plots here in the environment. And then, so we've already done this one. So this is interesting, right? Let's do this. So essentially what we've done here in the row with patch is we've created a patchwork object combining two ggplot objects. And then we added to that patchwork object uh, plot three. So what you can see here is that that doing so actually distorts the size of the graphs when you do it that way. So it's like half the plot is plot one and plot two and the other half is plot three rather than it being in thirds. Um, another important thing to recognize is when we're doing ggplot, we often use the plus symbol. And what can get confusing is the plus symbol here is not the same as the plus symbol here. What this is doing inside of making the ggplot function is adding a layer to the graph. So we can see in this one, we're adding uh, the geometric bar graph here. That is adding a bar graph layer to, to this plot. Whereas this is actually combining two different plots in a matrix. And for that reason, actually, um, this doesn't work with, with base R plots because you can't save a base R plot as an object. All right, let's see what else we can do here. So we can add, we can kind of, if you can imagine the, the plot area as a grid or a matrix, we can use those other squares in the matrix for things besides plots, which make making figures easier down the road. And so in this case, maybe we want to make a figure where out here we have some text explaining it. And so out to the side, we can use this grid text grab, or I guess they're saying grab, but um, to fill this plot area with text rather than a plot. Um, and there's another example of this. 
Oh, that's nice. This is new. Um, so if we do grid extra here, we can fill that plot area with a table. I hadn't done that before. That's really nice. Um, that would take a lot of work in ggplot to make that happen. Um, and so that's, that's a newer function that looks nice. I guess here what they're just showing is that you can, rather than type out plot one, plot two, you can just manually add a, a base R plot like this. Or can you? I wonder what happens if... Um, and then P1 plus. Yeah, so it's still, it looks like they found a workaround for using base R and combining that with ggplot, but you still can't save it as an object. So if you look here, when I, when I type this, rather than save it as an object, it just goes straight to the plot. And then when I do P1 plus base P, um, that base P is actually not saved as anything. So this line here, I guess, is a workaround to how to plot base R in patchwork. Um, it's still unfortunate that it requires like a manual writing out of the line, but uh, I guess if you're a big base R fan, that's, uh, that's a workaround that'll work. Hey Josh, does that work with two base R plots? Cause I mean, that would make more sense to me. Like That's uh, a good question. Let's see it here. It does not. Oh, I missed a little bit. Let's try. Yeah, because I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know if you need the, yeah, because it's just turning it as a function. Okay, yeah, so that's an interesting workaround, but I feel like it's pretty niche use case that you'd want like one. Yeah, to really, I guess plot. only yeah. if you wanted to add a plot to an already existing GG plot. And then how is that, like, you know how when you use base R, it kind of like the neck, if you add things to them, they're like consecutive functions that aren't necessarily connected. Mm -hmm. I don't like, I wonder how that would work. Like if you wanted um, like to add like a line to that last plot, like, I don't know if that would work. Like uh, you mean, like, uh, give me an example here of what you're saying. I'm not sure I'd tie a follow up. Um, give me one second. Like, um, For instance, if you wanted to add like an A B line. To oh, I get what you're saying. Plot. Yeah. So you know how you just kind of it's usually when you use base R, it's like the line under. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. So I don't know if you would add. Um let's see. Yeah, I like I, I doubt that that's gonna work. A B line. We want to do like 100. It's V equals. And yeah, like 20. Yeah, okay, try just like the first, I think you're yeah, still doing that first people. plot. Oops. Mm. Okay. 
Okay, All so right. you can. Good... Okay, cool. You can use regular, like, um, I guess, syntax, but I guess you are limited in that you only get one. Yeah, I, I don't see too many use cases for Yeah, that. it's also like how many people are are rotating between ggplot and base r in one figure. Yeah. Um is kind of But okay, cool. Um... So I guess this is this is the same thing saying here. Um, but what it's trying to show you is this wrap elements is really um, the workhorse. That's like their internal function of, uh, what, what would I say, of patchwork. So when you're adding the plus sign, that's what's, all right, what's actually adding it here. So if we, oh, I didn't. Wonder. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah. So if you're getting the gist of it, um, that wrap elements is kind of like the background function for what, uh, I guess, what is powering patchwork. Um, so what they're showing you here is you can like custom fit a, a base plot with, into your figure to be aligned with, with a GG plot. Um, but as they're showing here, this takes a good amount of work. So this top part is setting the parameters of the, of the plot. And then this wrap element is actually calling the base plot. And you can see with plot one, this is all done here to, from this same amount of code. So I don't see a lot of use cases like we said for actually um, using base R in patchwork. Um, and maybe that's the case they're making is that it's just easier to use with ggplot2. But I guess accessibility is, is nice. Okay, so we're starting to get to where we can rearrange uh, the text. What is different here if I don't put wrap elements? Okay, so you need the wrap elements as a leading. A leading object in the syntax. Okay. Um, if we were to do it the other way, could we? Yeah, so I guess if you're trying to add text as the first panel, uh, you have to add wrap elements. And that will allow you to put text on the left side. So that's a, that's a nice feature as well. 
All right, stacking plots. Okay, so we're getting into uh, some of the syntax again. But here we can do Now, now that I've added the plus P3 at the bottom, what do we think is gonna happen? Is it gonna be like these two under each other with the big P3 at the bottom? Is it gonna be these two next to each other with a big P1 over top? What? That was not what I was expecting. Let's see. Ah. That's so odd. I guess because it's already in a column, it's just adding to the third row here. So it goes P1 and P2 over top of each other. But then when it adds P3, it's added as a row rather than a column. And so to specify that you want it to the side, you would have to add parentheses. No, that's still not working. Okay, does anybody know if I wanted to put plot three over to the side here, what would I have to do? Because I'm a little, I'm a little lost. I hadn't, let's see. You mean here? I think she, she maybe means like instead of the uh, plus. <clears throat> Although, yeah, that is super weird that, because I thought the first thing you tried should do what you were trying to do. Uh, maybe a pipe here. Okay, there it is. So I guess you have to use the pipe instead of the plus sign here. That's interesting. Okay. So I think what's happening here with the pipe, if I'm understanding this correctly, is this is this is actually adding to a new column where this is adding a plot to the existing vector that's already there. And so since here we only had a column, it just added a third row, whereas here it put the plot out to the side. That's, that's really finicky syntax, but that makes sense. Okay, I didn't, I didn't see this part. This is working exactly through what we just did. Um, and if we just wanted four equal plots, I guess, we could do rat plots. as a simple way of doing, uh, this would be equivalent to P1 plus P2 pipe. Or actually, P4. 
Yeah. So these two lines are essentially expressing the same thing. Um, but it may be just easier to list it in wrap plots. Nesting on the left hand side. Oh, well, that's easy enough. I feel like this is kind of intuitive. Okay, so if you see what they're saying, this plot is nested in that it's a plot frame within a plot. And so you have to be careful of your syntax here because if you put these two together and then plot it on the left-hand side, it's going to divide that space between these two plots. Whereas on the right-hand side, it will divide all three spaces equally. And so to get around that, if you wanted to nest two plots on the left, uh, you can use the hyphen side. So this is going to plot patch on this side and plot P3 on the other. Oops, sorry. Um, whereas if we did... or plus, they would all be equally divided. Okay. That is it. Let's so can we modify, um, can we add a layer to a ggplot once it's been, um, been put in our expression? I'm not sure if I would do this because I think it's really confusing syntax, but yes, we can. So here, what we're doing is we're adding plots to, or uh, data points to the, the box plot here. Um, I'm not sure I like this because in one line of code, you have the plus sign here is from ggplot and the plus sign here is from patchwork and they're doing two very different things. Um, and if I wasn't familiar with this line of code, I would be very confused. I would much rather do something like P2 I think that's far clearer line of code, but I guess maybe there's different use cases um, or maybe you would just want to add onto one graph. Now I wonder if I, can we add P3 at the end of this? Yeah, so it does somehow recognize that this is a ggplot expression and that this is not. Um, but still, I, I'll keep them separate, in my opinion. OK, and so you can add, um, you can add almost a global um, ggplot term here to your entire patchwork object, which is nice using the and symbol. So in this case, if you look here, uh, ggplot is pretty notorious for like the solid gray background. And what theme minimal is doing is, is reducing that to just the grid. So if we do Um, 
and then patchwork. And then if we add and scene. And this can be really useful depending on what colors you use. Uh, this is something like this lighter blue down here doesn't as look as good on gray as it would on just a white background. Um, and that's something when making figures can be kind of a pain if you had to do this one panel at a time. At the current nesting level. Okay. So in this case, the and symbol adds it to all, whereas this will add the description to the plot at the current nesting level, which since we, we added P3, I wonder if we did something like, you can see here we have like one nest and then a nest deeper within that. So it's like an equation here and then the bigger equation. So what it's saying is it's applying uh, this theme minimal to this outer part. I wonder if we redefined our patchwork as, oops. Okay. Well, in that case, it moved to P2. That makes sense, right? So here would be our smaller equation and on the larger part, uh, P2 is the first graph. Um, that's interesting. So maybe you could, you, by understanding the syntax better and understanding the nesting, you could probably alter the backgrounds for like one graph at a time. That's, that seems difficult, but um it's probably useful in some cases okay so really i think this might be more useful so since we have patchwork here and it's a list of two ggplot objects we can go back and redefine our patchwork as this theme minimal for object one. And so that will remove the background for plot one. And let's see if we do it. See if we do it for, for plot two, if that works as well. Okay, so now we have both. Any guesses what's gonna happen if I do something like assign this to index three. So because we only have two plots in here, index three is out of bounds for that, that list. And so we'll return an error. Uh, 
All right, I think that's the end of it for today. For now, there are a lot of different things you can do with this. Um, I would recommend going to the site and exploring more. Uh, does anyone have any particular questions or concerns, comments? All right. The background color. After pitching is done. I think you should be able to do that, right? With like the and operator. And like yeah, things. you should be able to do that with and and what would it what gg plot function would be? It would be like theme, right? And I you think so. I, I you probably have to find plot. something in here. Um, if you if you looked up theme and gg plot, um, I would bet there's there's something in there. Maybe Luis probably knows gg plot a little better than me, but there's something in there that uh, you can customize the background color. That would only change it for each of the plot though, right? Uh, so the and sign makes it universal. Is that what you're asking? Um, so for the entire... Um, the entire I patchwork. Know. Okay, okay. Whereas the star makes it like your most outer path, your most outer graph. Mm -hmm. Thanks. All right, any other questions? That was a good question. All right, well, thanks guys. And uh, if, I, if I don't see you, have a good three-day weekend. And I guess I'll see you Tuesday. Great, cool. Thanks, Josh. All right, see you. I guess. Bye.